Technology continues to progress and make a lot of things easier for us. Travel, communication, finance, fintech, or financial technology is a huge and yet growing industry. But what if reverting back to the caveman days of finance is actually what you need? Today I'll show you how going old school with the envelope system may be the structure that turns your money around. With a personal story from someone who's using envelopes to maintain control of her family's finances on a daily basis. Let's get into it. The envelope system is essentially where you take cash from your paychecks and put them in different envelopes for different categories of your budget. Then you take cash out of the envelopes to pay for things like groceries and gas and it helps keep you from overspending because there's only so much money in the envelope before it runs out. And while many people think it's outdated, there's a whole community of cash stuffing, envelope loving budgeters that would disagree. Bessie is one of those. Her weekly videos and loyal audience prove that the envelope system is alive and well and makes money manageable for folks who need a different approach to finance. Tell me first of all, how did you kind of get into budgeting? I know that you mentioned that you started about a year ago. Yes, I started about a year ago. I got into it because I we were getting the stimulus checks at that point and I was using them to pay off my debt and randomly I was on YouTube and found uh, there was like a, a thumbnail of like somebody with like a bunch of money and like budget and I clicked on it and that piqued my interest and then I learned through more of those channels and more that YouTube kind of fed me those that kind of content that there was a system called sinking funds and cash envelopes. And I just thought about the, when I used to have cash in my hand, how much of a difference that made that I spent a lot less. And I was just totally using my debit card or my credit card for purchases. And I felt like I was getting all this money that I could you know, use to pay off my debt, but it still felt like I wasn't getting to where I wanted to go in terms of my savings. Yeah. And I saw a lot of people in this like budgeting community who were like growing their savings from cash that they were keeping. And it was very much a, felt like a mental thing. Like there's cash in this envelope and I cannot touch it. And I've had savings accounts and I always used to dip into it. So I really just got into it because it felt like the natural step after like my debt was going down and now I wanted to save money. What do I do now? And now that I've been in it for quite a bit, like there are natural progressions to this where now I'm saving to hopefully invest money. You know, I already have a retirement plan, but how do I improve that? And generally, like, how do I stay out of debt? I had to accrue more debt over the year uh, for other factors, but it still feels like a very manageable system that it feels keeps me accountable and it keeps me grounded. Like, I need a budget and I didn't realize how much I needed a budget. I was spending way too much on groceries when if I just gave myself cash for it, I would just stick to that amount of cash that I was using for my groceries. Here's a breakdown of how Bessie handles her money throughout the month using envelopes. If you wanna see some real life examples, you can check out her channel in the description down below. Hello, hello, my name is Bessie from Budgets with Best and this is how I do my budget and my sinking fund for my channel. But basically what I do is I use this paper planner that I bought from Amazon and it just helps me kind of take what I've been paid and split it. I get paid twice a month. I'm salaried employee, which means it is the same pay each time, nothing changes. And what I've done to kind of stay on my budgeting journey is take half my rent and my bills from each paycheck. So I won't disclose how much I get paid, but when I do get paid, what I do is I first take out half the rent, I transfer half my car note, half my childcare, half my cell phone, half my internet to a different checking account where those automatically come out of. So when the time comes after my two pay periods, they get taken out of that checking account. And sometimes I add a little bit more just so then I have a buffer in a separate checking account. And that usually leaves me with the remainder of $1,600 that I use for our other bills, sinking funds, and my cash envelopes. I have three credit cards right now that I'm trying to pay off and I pay those twice a month as well. So I don't have minimums for them anymore because I've been paying twice a month for years at this point. And I put about a hundred to the my lower priority cards that have lower interest or no interest. And then I'm paying off my Chase for 200 each month. And whenever I get extra money, I will throw more at the Chase so that I am done paying this off. And that 200 will eventually go into like a debt snowball payment for my other cards and it'll most likely be my Capital One. And then after that, I'm left with about 1200 for cash envelopes, sinking funds, and some savings. I then go through and just decide how much I'm gonna put in gas, food, giving, spending, personal care, and my kids or my son's envelope. And gas and food obviously have gone up, so I've had to add more to those envelopes. 
or I will go ahead and put less in them if I know that we're going out of town for a trip or if we have food, like we shop our pantry, we shop our freezer to kind of save on some groceries as well, or we kind of buy in bulk meat at Costco to help with expenses like that. Next, I go into, oh, and at the end of that, I have about 865, and that's give or take usually about how much I have left over for my sinking funds. In my sinking funds, I'm only stuffing five right now. In the past, I've had about 20. I'm just taking a break, but do what you feel is the best. Prioritize what you want to save up for. I know Christmas is really important to us, so that will be added soon. Travel is coming up. I always put money for my son in his savings account, no matter what. Gifts, because Father's Day is coming up. So, you know, keep in mind what you want to save for and add the money there. If I wanted to, my other ones, I would just add $5 to the rest of them and let them accumulate, but I am using that for my savings challenges because at the end, I have about 660 left and I use about 360 towards challenges, which is just really a fun way of saving your money. At least it is for me. I really enjoy it. And after the 360, I have about 300 remainder that stays in my buffer because what that will pay for is if we go to the movies, if we wanna go eat out one night, if I buy extra coffee for my staff or for myself at work, I don't really budget those things because those small expenses, while I know they can add up, I just don't have a lot of time or energy to really track every expense that comes out of my checking account. But I know that that's how much I have, so I check my account daily. That is one of the first things I check in the morning is check my checking account, make sure there's no surprise, so, you know, bills or charges or anything like that. So let's say I do all of this, right? I go to the bank with something that looks like this, which will write down how much I need in terms of a hundred, a 50, a 20 or 10 or five or one in denominations. And I write that down. I look at this, I figure out how much I need in cash, go to the bank, take out the cash, bring it home, film myself stuffing it into my envelopes, which I'll show you next. When we say cash envelope, this is just a little change uh, purse, is this is one of the envelopes that I use or one of the binders that I use. And I have different categories like fun, transit, and these are more of my travel ones. Usually I will have like food in here and I will stuff the cash in here for food, for gas, for my son, for personal care. And as I'm out and about, I will use the cash from just here to pay for my expenses that I've already budgeted for. I would show you what I have now, but it's one day before payday, which means there's not much that I would have in my cash envelopes anyways. So that's it for my cash envelopes, and I do have a little pouch for my change. But next is my binders. And like I shared previously, my son will always get money, and so he will always get cash in his envelope. And all of these we buy from Etsy. A lot of us just kind of buy pretty ones. Well, I when I first started, I just made my own and then as I saved some money, I bought some. So for example, my son whose envelope I'm very proud of has $2,000 right now in a high yield savings and I use these placeholders cuz I would much rather have fake money in here than all that real money. And that's mostly for safety reasons. And these again, buy them on Etsy, people make them. It's just a good way to track what's in the savings account and you know and then the rest of the cash goes here and after a certain amount of time if for example I get to about another thousand then I will put a placeholder in here and then it'll just be an envelope full of placeholders some envelopes that I kind of feel are a little important juice box is our cat so I definitely put money away for our pets while she's still relatively healthy I'm thinking about when she might need some medical expenses or is going to face medical expenses you know she's an older cat so we're just saving up for that so that when we get a bill or something happens we have a savings account to dip in for for her um, we have one for clothes prime which is like yearly expenses as well I can save for five dollars to ten dollars each pay period so by the time that this is due at the end of the year it's not one big bill I have the money already set aside for it pretty much how sinking funds or I have my sinking funds broken down uh, thank you all so much and a big thank you to Caleb for allowing me to do this I really appreciate it. So please don't forget to subscribe and like his channel and content. Bye y'all.
What Bessie said about the envelope system is absolutely true. When it comes to managing money, it's hard to beat cold hard cash. Because psychologically, handing over cash feels very different than handing over a card, even a debit card. Cash not only helps you spend less because you have a harder time parting with your money, it also physically restricts how much you can spend at the grocery store because you only have so much cash. Sure, it might be less convenient in some cases. But listen, if you're someone who's more visual, if you're someone who needs the physical restriction of cash in order to stay vigilant with your finances, I would highly recommend recommend you get some envelopes and just start. And hit up Bessie on YouTube in order to see how she handles her money on a weekly basis. Now, envelopes are a proven way to budget, but if you're more interested in the digital way of budgeting, I've got tons of videos to help. You can check out the playlist right here. Now, if you need a bit more help than what videos can offer, I'm happy to help. Sign up for a call with me in the description down below where you can tell me your story and we can determine if financial coaching is right for you. It's not for everyone, but it can certainly provide that push and accountability that a lot of people need in order to get their money back on track. Otherwise, give this video a like because that really helps my channel. Thanks for sticking around.